<clears throat> Morning, everyone. All right. It's been a long while since I've been up here, and I haven't been singing. Oh, man, I'm nervous. Well, you know, thankfully, I'm up here pretty rarely, which is pretty good for everybody involved. Um, this week, I was thinking about this brilliant spin to put on the Lord's Supper. I think a lot of times when I think about talking about the Lord's Supper, I think, oh, what what new spin can I put on it? What can I bring to the congregation that will reinvest us or renew us for this week coming? And, um, and I think back to all these great Lord's Supper talks that I've heard in the past. And uh, there's been so many. And and, um, and I sort of had this, this idea, that's something that I'd like. And... I went into this week and at the start of the week, I said to myself, you know, this, this week, I'm going to be looking for things that will inspire me that I can take the congregation and share with you sort of like almost like an example, like a parable that I can give to you. It was a horrible work week, oh, man. It was so bad. Thursday was okay. The rest horrendous, absolutely horrendous. I completely lost track of the goal. It was just, you know, you get those weeks. It's just, oh man, I'll tell you later about it if you're interested, but man, it was horrible. Completely threw me out. And in all that stress, I had completely lost sight of the goal. And I was thinking yesterday, and that was really the only time I had to just sit down. And it reminded me of a passage, um, which is John 4, 13 to 15. And I'll just read it out. <clears throat> Come now, you who say... Today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town, spend a year there, and trade and make profit. It's brilliant. I work for a bank, so of course, that's exactly what they talk about all day at work. Yet, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. just a thought that kind of occurred to me as I was coming up with this and I was just really reflecting on the week past. The good news is, for me and for anyone else who's had bad weeks, months, years, we're, it's better than that. We're, our calling is bigger than just a week's stress. For me, when I got back into the Word, and prepared for this morning, all that stress was like water off a duck's back. So I want to just reflect oh, thank you, Glenn, on why we are here. What are we doing? And this is a very short Lord's Supper, and I'm, I'm sorry about that, but um, let's turn to Matthew 28, 1 through 6. Um, and it reads, now after the Sabbath, oh, I'll read it from here. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, and he said, Come see the place where he lay. That is the reason we're here this morning. No matter how bad our weeks get, we come on a Sunday morning, first day of the week, to remember what it is we're doing. There are weeks where it's a complete loss. I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just like waves crashing against the side of the, of the, of the beach, the rocks at the ocean. But on a Sunday morning, we allow ourselves that time to get recentered. Um, the other verse I want to read is Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, which I'll read out quickly. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Jesus, our Savior, represents 
renewal. The reason that we're here on the first day to break bread, take the cup. You know, I'm not going to pretend that bad weeks that happen don't mean anything. Because it does, and it can affect us terribly. But it doesn't dictate who we are, because we have, through Christ, this renewal of self. That's all I really wanted to talk about this morning. I wanted to just reflect on my week and turn it into a positive thought. So I think what we'll do is we'll have the attendants come forwards and we will break the bread and take the cup. Thank you. I should probably pray. Pray for the bread. Thank you, God, for everything that you do. We are so thankful for the relationship that we have with you, that through your son's sacrifice, we can have this relationship with you. That the veil between us was removed. And that we can share in glory, Lord. We take the bread now, Lord, to represent the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. for the cup. <clears throat> Logan, we come to you, humble servants. We are just in awe of the sacrifice that your son made on the cross, Lord, that his blood was shed for us. But through this, we can have this renewal, this hope, this thankfulness that no matter what comes, that we know you are with us. That we do not need to fear, we do not need to worry. That stress and worldly focus can just wash away, Lord. That your son washes away all of this. Lord, we take this element to represent this, Lord, and we just thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.